First forecast brought to you by Store It At Home, rent to own portable buildings. Looking at the forecast overnight tonight, partly cloudy and mild out there. We'll have the cloud cover start to move in. But overall, as we go into tonight through the day tomorrow, we're going to see, well, really a pretty nice day on the way for tomorrow. But it will be mild, and you will notice the wind coming out of the south. Things really get going out there. Today was pretty nice. 80 degrees out there, plenty of sunshine. Got up to 61 for our low last night, normal for this time of year. 74 and 50. But we are talking about storms moving in tomorrow evening. Could even be strong or severe, as well as more heavy rain to talk about. Of course, that's all coming up in just a few minutes. Your ABC 31 News starts right now. Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. A man surrenders to police after a deadly convenience store shooting. And that is our big story tonight. 21 year old Jaquarius Artisan is charged with first degree murder in the homicide that happened Saturday night in Natchitoches. Police say Artisan shot Jamel Haskett multiple times at the ShopRite on the 200 block of Kaiser Avenue. They say the two had been fighting when both men fired their weapons. A Faraday woman was killed after a crash with another vehicle. It happened on Louisiana Highway 568, east of Louisiana Highway 900. Police say a car driven by 28 year old Michael Higgins hit a car driven by 72 year old Betty Johnson head on after he apparently crossed the center line. Johnson was killed. State troopers say she was not wearing a seatbelt. Higgins was seriously hurt. He was restrained. Routine toxicology tests and charges are pending. Today's guest speaker at the First at First Business Luncheon, Sandy Gilliland, discussed the topic of building effective teams. There's a lot of fear and trepidation for a lot of people when they work in group uh, settings, whether that's on a group project at um, an industry or for my students when they're working in group projects. Um, some students love group work and others absolutely loathe group work. And so my goal for today is to talk about what are the variables that help predict successful group work and then what are some things to try to avoid, um, specifically looking at like social phenomenon such as social loafing and social facilitation which is to suggest that um, in certain conditions, um, a group actually brings out the best in us and we work harder, and then in other conditions, it actually allows us to kind of loaf and not be as effective as we would be if we were working individually. Um, and then the other main topic that we'll be looking at is the impact of personality. Gilliland is an associate professor of psychology at LSU Alexandria. She's also a licensed marriage and family therapist operating a private practice. The Adams family and Marksville residents put their egg knocking skills to the test yesterday as they celebrated Easter. ABC 31 Char Thomas was there and has the story. The world famous Marksville egg knocking contest produced lots of smiling faces on Easter Day. Egg knocking is more than a contest, it is a family tradition for the Adams family. Oh, my husband uh, raised his own chickens and guineas so that our grandchildren and our children had time to come here and celebrate and knock eggs. And he has been doing this since he was a little boy. Many of the participants represent many generations who gathered for this Easter ritual. So, what is egg knocking? It's a way to determine the toughest egg and no cheating is allowed. Every year, we, everybody tries to get the hardest egg. So we have we have like four categories. We have uh, uh, four categories for chicken and four categories for guinea. You knock chicken against chicken and guinea eggs against guinea eggs. Egg knocking is mostly a Cajun custom and celebration of Easter Day. It is also a time for family and friends to gather after church to celebrate the true meaning of Easter. In Marksville, Shar Thomas, ABC 31 News. For those of you who are looking for some things to do this month, you're in luck. Kelly West of the Alexandria Pineville Area and Convention and Visitors Bureau. Stop by to give us the scoop on what's going on in Alexandria. There's literally something every weekend. Um, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, everything's on this weekend. There's that. It's spread out this month. It's looking really nice, like a really great month of activity. Should be great weather, too. Should be fantastic weather. And some of these things are going to be outside, so that's even better. Um, of course, theater. April's a big month for theater. Um, empty Space Players, City Park Players, um, Ash and Menard all have theater programs this month. Um, and there's literally one every week. So you can go on the calendar, you can figure out which one you want to go to. And one for 
all age groups as well. So it's going to be a really great month for some culture and theater. Um, starting the first weekend in April, Ken House has their Herb Day, always a favorite. They do sell out early, so get there early. For more information, you can visit alexandriapineville.com. The 8th Annual Lemonade Day will be held on Saturday, May the 5th. In the past eight years, more than 100,000 young people have set up their own lemonade stands on Lemonade Day to learn about business and entrepreneurship in a fun way. It's a program, an educational and entrepreneurial program for children and their families to, to learn business uh, by doing a lemonade stand. And this year it's going to be on May 5th, and it'll be our eighth year. And the, the children uh, sell lemonade on Lemonade Day, and they uh, give money to charity. It's not just the entrepreneur themselves. The whole family gets involved. And there's always an adult or, or uh, uh, older sibling, and uh, it really becomes an entire family affair. Children ages 4 to 12 can register online to participate in this year's Lemonade Day. Lemonade Day co-founder and founder of Raising Cane's, Todd Graves, also announced that on April 10th, all Raising Cane's locations in 24 states will donate a dollar for every lemonade sold at each restaurant to the National Lemonade Day program. Get it growing with Dan Gill, Thursdays on ABC 31 News. Brought to you by Bayou Robert Co-op, serving farmers and ranchers since 1961. Checking out the severe weather risk right off the top for tomorrow, and all of the state is in the slight risk area. The biggest threat tomorrow is going to be wind gust and hail, and really it's going to be wind gust after these storms start to mature. Updraft potential with these storms is really going to be rather limited, so the storms that start going get big really right off the bat may have hail potential. That's really looking toward East Texas and not really here in Louisiana. Biggest threat is going to be wind gusts. There is a threat for tornadoes as well, but overall environment looks unfavorable for tornadoes to develop. This is really going to be about wind gust, wind gust, wind gust with these storms, and definitely likely that we're looking at a line of storms as well. We're going to start this off tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Now, this is one model run, so don't take this to truth that this is exactly what's going to happen, but this is what could happen probably any time after 3 o'clock tomorrow. Likely scenario that we set up here. You notice these storms really start going and maturing, setting up into kind of a line here just to the south of Shreveport by 8 p.m. tomorrow, and then they're going to eventually move their way in to central and southern Louisiana as we go throughout the evening hours. And you notice we're still dealing with rain and thunderstorms off to our south by 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. So we're going to have to watch this as we go throughout the afternoon tomorrow and through the night tomorrow because those storms will be slowly working their way across the state and uh, to the south and east. So all parishes are in that type of area, and we'll have to watch rather closely throughout the day tomorrow. On top of that, we could be looking at heavy rain. The heaviest of rain forecasted to the north and west of downtown area, but again, that's right where the Red River is, and it flows right through downtown here, so we're going to have to watch the flooding situation as well. Now, the rivers aren't running as high as they were. We did have that heavy rain last week, so they're still up, and we're not looking at overall flooding risk, but there is the potential there. Today, quite warm here. If you go off toward Dallas, only get a high of about 46 degrees today, and we got all the way up to 80 degrees. So we got to enjoy some nice, lovely weather and plenty of sunshine. Tomorrow will be warm once again out ahead of those storms that will be firing off to our north and west throughout the day tomorrow. But a strong thunderstorm indeed. Overnight tonight, not worrying about the storms just yet. 66 degrees. Mostly cloudy and breezy tomorrow for most of the day. It'll be late in the afternoon and evening. We see those storms get going, and some of them could be strong or severe. Much cooler weather on the way for our Wednesday and Thursday, and then we have to watch for storms again Friday and Saturday. That's a look at your seven day and your weather forecast. Scott? Thank you, Ross. Scientists may be on track to develop a treatment for the West Nile virus, which is spread by mosquitoes. A team from Yale University found the therapy delivered through the noses of mice was effective in reducing the virus in the brain, allowing the immune system to destroy the disease. 
Researchers will study the therapy further to see if it's also effective in humans. Among cancers, what is the number one killer and can that be changed? Here's Serena Marshall. Lung cancer, it's still the number one killer when it comes to cancer deaths. But luckily, death rates are declining for men around the country. But for women, that improvement is lagging behind. Researchers from Emory University used data from the National Cancer Institute to find hot spots, areas where lung cancer mortality hasn't improved for women. And they found two. A large area in the Appalachian region saw mortality rates rise 12% in the past two decades. Women there are dying from lung cancer at 28% higher rates than other regions. Another cluster is in the northern Midwest and began in 1990 with lung cancer deaths below the national average. But death rates are now up 7%. What do these hotspot regions have in common? High percentages of cigarette smoking among women least likely to quit, lower tobacco taxes, fewer anti-smoking public health efforts, and fewer clean air laws. The study warns that public health efforts should aim at the hot spots. That is, if they want to try to turn women's lung cancer rates around. Coming up in sports, an unlikely hero helps the NSU softball team earn a hard-fought win over the knees. Good morning, Central Louisiana. Good morning, America. Look for your local weather updates during GMA. Brought to you by LSUA. Find your way to A. Good evening and welcome back to KLX ABC 31 Sports. I'm Zach Seminar. The Northwestern State Demons have gotten off to a splendid start to the 2018 season, but their riveting early season play was slowed this weekend by one of the country's very best, McNeese State. The Cowgirls took two from the Demons in a three-game weekend series, but the star of the weekend was freshman Kayla Jones, who you see here, bashing two home runs to lead NSU to their lone win of the series on Saturday. One of her long balls good for her first career grand slam. Jones talked about the big hit, and the Demons need to bounce back after an otherwise difficult weekend. Well, when I hit the grand slam, um, all I thought about was I finally got a chance because uh, last night, one more at bat, I would have got that chance. So I figured I had another chance, so I had to make the most out of it and help the team. We uh, can definitely learn that against the teams, we have to, we can't be. Uh, pushing from behind all the time. We got to start out from the gate. So that's what that is. We're out of time. Thanks for watching. When a case seems unsolvable, they see the incredible murder, motive, secrets. Bones weekend. Watch Bones weekends on KLAX ABC 31. Spring on in to the Kent Plantation House April 7th for the Spring Herb Day. This arts and crafts festival and yard sale is free and sure to be the ultimate pleasure for morning treasure. Tioga Junior High School is hosting a community garage sale to benefit the Sin Law Alliance for Animals. Join us in giving back to our furry friends in need. Join our party for the second annual Veterans Benefit at Taboo Harley-Davidson. Enjoy cool drinks and good grub. All proceeds benefit disabled American veterans. April 13th is the Repeats Cancer Center's third Colors of Courage 5K and Color Run. Meet us downtown at 6 to benefit the American Cancer Society. For more community events, visit us on Facebook or at KLAXTV.com.